Uh, thanks, everyone. It's a great pleasure uh, for me to talk about Cosmos. Um, so essentially, some of the, the things I'm going to talk about today is actually based on our, um, our Mobicom challenge paper uh, published in 2020. And I'm going to also talk about some of the updates we've been doing uh, throughout the pandemic and what are the capabilities of the testbed and what type of ex experiments can be done using the testbed. Um, so overall, uh, Cosmos is a city scale programmable testbed for <clears throat> experimentation with advanced wireless. It's a joint project between Rutgers, Columbia, NYU, along with uh, several partners, including New York City, IBM, Silicon Harlem, uh, the City College of New York, and also the uh, University of Arizona. So on the right hand side, you can see a picture we took at Columbia looking north into West Harlem in New York City. If we abstract this figure into the infographic shown on the left hand side, we all firmly believe that wireless networks and systems of different types have been serving as the very important infrastructure for our daily lives, supporting applications such as digital communications, environmental monitoring, transportation systems, and also many other services. Our objective of Cosmos is to design prototype and evaluate technologies for the wireless edge to enable novel modes of interactions between city residents and the urban environment. In particular, we focus on emerging technologies, including millimeter wave communications and multi-antenna systems, as well as on their convergence with the optical axial networks and edge computing and cloud. Many of these technologies have been studied in isolation, uh, theoretically or in a lab setting. The Cosmos project aims to actually build and deploy a playground for researchers to explore and experiment with these advanced technologies in a real dense urban setting. For future wireless networks and systems, not only bandwidth, but also latency and compute power are two important dimensions and metrics. Um, edge cloud and computing can also enable real-time uh, applications by putting uh, the processing closer to the users. Our objective of the Cosmos testbed is to develop and deploy an open access, remotely accessible advanced wireless testbed that supports real world investigation of urban environments with ultra high bandwidth at gigabits per second, ultra low latency at five millisecond or less, coupled with the powerful edge computing. All these capabilities are enabled by Cosmos uh, programmable infrastructure, including tens of millimeter wave radios, tens of miles of dark fiber throughout Manhattan, and also beyond 5G edge cloud base stations. Using this infrastructure, researchers can study the convergence challenges of high-speed wireless access, edge cloud and computing, and optical X call for low latency communications, which can further enable a broad new class of real-time applications, such as augmented reality, autonomous vehicles, and smart intersections. The Cosmos testbed is supported by the National Science Foundation Platforms for Advanced Wireless Research Program, which currently includes four city-scale testbed in the US. As of now, three testbed has been, uh, have been declared uh, to be general available for the use by the community. And they are the Powder Renew testbed in Salt Lake City, the Cosmos testbed in New York City, and also the AirPol testbed in the Research Triangle. There are also a number of other wireless testbed around the world, and some of their names are listed here. So in this talk, um, I'm going to focus on the challenges we faced and experiences we gained during the design, development, and deployment of the city scale programmable Cosmos testbed uh, in the past uh, about four and a half years. We'll then dive into Cosmos key technologies, including software-defined radios, programmable millimeter wave radios, a flexible optical uh, transport network, and software-defined networking and edge cloud. We'll then briefly overview a few Cosmos pilot experiments, which we uh, developed to help drive and validate the testbed design. I'll also talk, uh, briefly talk about our education and outreach efforts using the testbed. So some of the contents of this talk are based on a challenge paper that we presented at Mobicom 2020. You can also find more videos and recent updates about Cosmos in our, on our website. So I'm gonna uh, play a short video here so you guys can take a look at you know, how the testbed, uh, you know, how, how we were building testbed and most, many of the, uh, these video clips were actually shot, uh, shot before the, the pandemic. I hope you guys can, can see the video. So here, um, this is basically myself with my colleague. We are sitting, uh, we're standing on the rooftop of Columbia. This was all the way back in uh, 2019 before the pandemics. This is uh, after we built these uh, large node antennas, which we're gonna put up on the 18th floor uh, rooftop of the Columbia Engineering Building. And you can see like all these uh, scaffoldings were put up so uh, contractors and us can, can go up and we're able to put these antennas on the 18th floor uh, rooftop on the wall. It's about, you know, uh, 70 
meters high, I believe, above the ground. And this is basically the indoor enclosure um, that connects to the radios, which are on the other side of the wall. Uh, within this enclosure, you can see all kinds of RF front end uh, switches, uh, filters, uh, management chassis. And there's actually another uh, tray of uh, silver defined radios, which are below these antenna uh, front end. And this is how the antennas look like. And then we're basically doing some testings to make sure the antennas are actually able to send signals out. And here we comes to the, uh, the actual uh, fiber optic cables. You can see a fast forwarded uh, video clip showing the Columbia uh, IT uh, department, basically pulling fiber uh, from the basement to the data center to be able to connect various Cosmos components uh, together through this uh, high-speed fiber optic network. And this is how we deployed uh, a medium node on the second floor of the same building. Essentially it has you know, antennas on the top and then cameras at the, uh, in the bottom. So you can not only do wireless experiments, but here you can also use the cameras at the bottom to collect videos of the intersection and then do all kinds of learning and video analytics uh, type of uh, applications, which are mostly targeted at the smart intersection uh, scenarios. So this is a view of the Columbia data center as part of the engineering school. And you can actually see this is the rack with the Cosmos servers. And here we see the, the, the millimeter wave uh, arrays in the lab. This is basically how we connected the alpha version of the arrays to a software defined radios. And here you can also see some other customized radios we built. This is the, our first generation uh, through duplex radios we also integrated. And I'm actually gonna talk more about many of these components in the rest of the talk. So I hope that gives you a, a, a good overview of how the test bed looks like from, from the city. Uh, so now I'm gonna hope, hopefully I'm, I'm able to switch back to my uh, presentation. So that was a quick overview uh, of how the test bed looks like, especially during the very initial phase of the development and deployment. Um, so the objective of Cosmos is really to uh, deploy and develop the beyond 5G version of Orbit. So some of you might have heard about Orbit Testbed in Wind Lab at Rutgers University, which is an indoor lab uh, with hundreds of radio nodes with different technologies that can be used by, use, uh, by users from the community. So the ob objective of Cosmos is essentially to build the next generation of uh, Testbed of uh, or, uh, Orbit to take it outside and to deploy an open access, remotely accessible and programmable wireless testbed at city scale with uh, cutting edge hardware and software components. So what does uh, city scale really mean? This figure here shows the envisioned deployment map of Cosmos in a dense urban area of about one square mile in West Harlem, covering about 15 city blocks and five city avenues. There are three types of Cosmos nodes with different form factors for different deployment scenarios. The large nodes are base station type of nodes deployed on rooftops for macro coverage. The medium nodes are small cell type of nodes deployed on building sites or on street light posts. And the small nodes are user type of nodes powered by batteries and can be carried around by users or vehicles. <coughs> Deploying such a large scale test bed in a real dense urban setting is extremely challenging and requires a significant collaborative efforts on planning and coordination, which also involves multiple organizations and stakeholders. Cosmos is deployed using a phased approach, as we show here in this phased diagram, where all solid lines here represent existing and ongoing fiber connections, and also the network topology between different sites and testbed components. In particular, the blue lines in the figure show the different fiber connections within the testbed area, and also between the Cosmos testbed and other sites, including uh, you know, the co-location site in downtown Manhattan at 32 avenues of the, the Americas, uh, the control and data center at Rutgers, uh, the other site at City College of New York, as well as other research infrastructures such as the fabric uh, testbed. Although these fiber connections look like a tree topology, uh, we actually implemented a uh, software-defined networking controller to support reconfigurable optical network topology uh, using space switching and wavelength switching technologies, which I'll briefly describe in a couple of slides. On this slide, we show the detailed timeline of the Cosmos project up to now. The Cosmos project started in April 2018, and the pilot phase was completed in May 2019. In uh, September 2019, uh, FCC designated the testbed area as one of the nation's first uh, two innovation zones, therefore making wireless experiments in this area easier and more, uh, more accessible. The testbed was declared uh, general available in June 2020, and currently we're in the phase one uh, deployment. On this slide, we show the detailed in the, in the envisioned deployment map of Cosmos in West Harlem. In the center figure, 
Different colors represent buildings and assets owned by the different entities, including Columbia University, City College of New York, and the New York City, where several Cosmos nodes have been or will be deployed. The colored lines represent the dark fiber-based optical network as part of the testbed infrastructure. It provides high bandwidth connections between different Cosmos nodes. The 32 uh, avenues of the Americas co-location site in downtown Manhattan, and also the core optical switching complex located in the Columbia data center, which is represented by the, the, the gray cube at the bottom of the figure. During the pilot phase, we've deployed two large nodes, uh, three medium nodes, and several small nodes. These are shown in the you know, dark green shaded area. We also deployed two sandboxes at Rutgers and Columbia for experiments in a controlled environment. The ongoing phase one deployment that you can see here in the shaded blue area focuses on the City College campus and also the Amsterdam Avenue corridor. The dark fiber uh, connection between different sites uh, finished in the pilot phase was challenging as getting dark fiber in Manhattan involves interactions with uh, several city agencies. You can also see the de deployed sandbox too and also the core optical switching and compute uh, cluster at the Columbia University data center. Here you can also see two uh, <clears throat> full racks in the data center where the left rack houses all the optical switching and transmission equipment together with the spooled fiber planet and the, the rack on the right uh, houses Cosmos management and data switches, as well as a cluster of compute servers. Our pilot large node was deployed on the large uh, on the 18th floor of the Columbia Mod building, and it has three sectors providing coverage in different areas. Each sector has four directional antennas and a GPS antenna installed outdoor, which are all connected to the RF front end and software defined radios housed in an indoor enclosure. The two pilot medium nodes were deployed on the first and second floor on the same building and are equipped with uh, four omnidirectional antennas as well as a camera. So similar to each large node sector, the software defined radios are connected to the Columbia data center and edge servers with, uh, with, uh, through high-speed fiber optic cables. Each medium node also has a camera at the bottom of the nodes, which can be used for video analytics and smart intersection type of applications. <clears throat> Here we show some views of our indoor sandboxes deployed in Rutgers and Columbia during the pilot phase, which include a number of programmable radios in both uh, sub six gigahertz and also millimeter wave frequencies. I'm gonna talk more about these uh, uh, technologies in a, in a couple of slides. <clears throat> during the ongoing phase one deployment, we're working on the development and deployments of another large node and two medium nodes on the City College campus which is about 15 blocks north to the Columbia campus. The Columbia and City College campuses are connected via six pairs of dark fiber, which we got from Crown Castle, in order to provide both connectivity and optical experiment capabilities between the two sites. <laughs> so in order to allow researchers to experiment with the testbed full potentials, including high bandwidth, low latency, and powerful edge computing, Cosmos is designed and built as a multi-layered computing architecture, as you can see here in the figure on the right-hand side with the full programmability all the way from the radio hardware layer up to the edge and central cloud. Key technologies of Cosmos include a large number of software defined radios, programmable millimeter wave phased array antenna modules, a flexible underlying optical transport network, um, software defined networking and edge cloud, and also a sophisticated control and management software for coordinating testbed resources and monitoring at 24 seven. Different paths here in the red uh, shown in the, in the figure represent possible data routes or data paths supported by the Cosmos testbed, where data processing can happen in different locations at different distances away from where the data was generated or, uh, or collected. We've also developed and conducted several pilot experiments to help drive and validate the testbed design and architecture, which will be described later in this talk. So uh, next, I'm gonna briefly overview some of the, uh, some of the, uh, the, the key technologies. The first one is the software defined radio, which offers full flexibility of spectrum use in the sub six gigahertz frequency band. A subset of the radios also equipped with the 28 or 60 gigahertz millimeter wave capabilities. The figure here shows a general block diagram of a software defined radio node where different node configurations include a subset of the components such as the USRP software defined radios, the Xilinx RF SOC platform, as well as RF and the millimeter wave front end. Using this design, uh, radio signal processing can be separated between the radio nodes and the edge cloud, depending on the configuration of the software defined radio node. Here are some examples of software defined radio nodes we deployed in different form factors, 
including the large node sectors on building rooftops, uh, medium nodes on building side or on street light posts, and also small mobile, mobile nodes that are powered by batteries and can be car carried around by users or vehicles. For the large node deployed on the 18th floor rooftop of the Columbia Engineer Building, we have conducted uh, signal strength measurement in order to verify the coverage of each of its uh, three sectors. In particular, we use the software-defined radios in each large node sector to send Wi-Fi packets in the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band with allowable transmit power levels. And the heat maps of the received signal strength seen by the Wi-Fi card on the laptop uh, moving on the street are shown on this, uh, on this slide. These measurements uh, confirm the desired coverage of the large node sectors as we deploy them, uh, which can support link distances of up to 600 meters with uh, reasonably good uh, link SNR values. The second key technology is a family of millimeter wave radios. And one main component is the IBM 28 gigahertz phased array antenna module, which features four 16 element beam forming ICs and supports up to eight simultaneous beams in both horizontal and vertical polarizations. These are unique capabilities that can enable various experiments on adaptive beam forming and beam tracking. We've integrated two beta version uh, phased array antenna modules in each of the two Cosmo sandboxes with the different baseband uh, configurations, including the use of the USRP software defined radio, as well as the Xilinx RF SOC platform in order to achieve a real-time bandwidth of several hundreds of megahertz. Using a similar approach, we also deployed several uh, silver 60 gigahertz wide gig transceivers, which are attached to the USRP and Xilinx uh, platform as the baseband. In addition, <laughs> we've deployed end-to-end -end millimeter wave systems in Cosmos, including the 60 gigahertz telegraph radios from Facebook, as well as the 5G NR platform and edge link nodes from InterDigital. And many of these uh, details will actually be presented in a WinTech paper uh, in about, I would say, three weeks. And if you're interested in, uh, feel free to check out the paper. And that includes a pretty good overview of the, the millimeter wave capabilities uh, supported by the Cosmos testbed. So here's a more detailed view of the various programmable millimeter wave radios deployed in the Cosmos Sandbox 1 at Rutgers which are mounted on either fixed uh, structures like a tripod or on an XY positioning table. We, de uh, we developed a web GUI interface for testbed users to control the movement of the millimeter wave front end mounted on this XY positioning table. Uh, they can do it from remote. And also we provide a real-time camera feed stream so users can actually see whether these arrays are being moved as uh, expected. To support millimeter wave measurements and experiments in mobile scenarios, We've also prototyped uh, this yellow node, which is a mobile 28 gigahertz radial yeah, using a waterproofed enclosure and the IBM 28 gigahertz array. Using the IBM 20 gigahertz, uh, 28 gigahertz phased array antenna module deployed in Sandbox 1, we've performed a series of measurements to characterize the array's performance. For example, in order to measure the transmit beam pattern, we set up one phased array uh, with a USRP radio as the transmitter. And we use the signal analyzer connected with a horn antenna to record the received signal strength uh, over time, and as well as a function of the beam forming distance, a beam forming angle. In the polar plots, you can see on the right hand side, we show the measured received signal power as the transmitter uh, array sweeps its transmit beam forming direction across both the horizontal and vertical plane. In particular, the blue curves correspond to the case where 16 antenna elements are switched on and the orange curve corresponds to the case where only eight antenna elements are switched on. As you can see from these measurement results, this 28 gigahertz array is able to achieve a peak to null ratio of close to 30 dB, which is uh, sufficient for highly directional transmission at millimeter wave frequencies in 5G and beyond networks. The next key technology of Cosmos is, the, is a programmable optical transport network. On this slide, we show the core optical switching architecture of Cosmos and also the corresponding fiber uh, optical switching for large node in the bottom inset. In particular, a Kalian S320 space switch with uh, 320 input and output ports forms the core of uh, Cosmos optical networks in the Columbia data center. Fiber pairs connect, uh, connect the central Kalian space switch with uh, smaller space switches at each of the large nodes. These space switches allow for remote and automated fiber connections and device uh, throughout the testbed. Wavelength division multiplexing or WDM is provided by the Lumentum white box uh, reconfigurable optical add and drop multiplexer units or uh, Rotom units, which are also connected to the space switches. Other devices attached to, to the central space switch include a number of top of rack switches and optical transceivers, uh, test equipment, fiber spools, and different experimental hardware. 
Using this capability, the fiber pairs between any two devices, such as between a radio node and, a, and an edge server, or between two servers in a data center, can be configured for combinations of point-to-point -point, um, passive optical networks or rodem WDM networks. This slide is a brief overview of Cosmo programmable optical network that was described before, which supports space switching and wavelength switching capabilities through the use of optical space switches and the Lumentum white box rodem unit. It also includes tens of miles of dark fiber throughout Manhattan, which we got from Zenfi networks and Crown Castle. These dark fiber network together with fiber spools with different lengths in our data center can allow researchers to generate a large number of optical topologies <coughs> that emulate real world network scenarios. Currently, we're also building Mininet Optical, which is a simulator based on Mininet that incorporates different hardware components and connections topologies in the optical layer. Mininet Optical takes measurements from the various optical hardware device deployed in the Cosmos as input parameters. And therefore, when you're running uh, simulations in Mininet using this collected measurement from Cosmos optical equipment, you can view the Mininet Optical simulator as a digital twin of the physical Cosmos testbed deployed in Manhattan. Another key technology of the Cosmos is the core and edge cloud. On this slide, we show the logical topology of Cosmos cloud architecture overlaid on its optical topology with the corresponding aggregated link capacities. The edge cloud computing uh, topology uh, uh, computing sites contain three types of computing resources uh, of GPUs, CPUs, and FPGAs. In order to provide flexible and powerful signal processing capability, capabilities, while also supporting general purpose computing tasks required for different applications. Cosmos SDN framework integrates native and agent-based control of both wired and wireless resources. This allows the SDN experiments to implement application-driven control of optical and data networking functionalities, as well as radio resources. In addition, this SDN framework supports virtualization and also allows for logical separation of the same radio or network resource into multiple distinct networks with their own topology and routing protocols. This, uh, I'll also mention that this cloud and edge computing infrastructure has been serving as an open test and integration center during the ORAN uh, North America plug fest and also uh, the ORAN proof, proof of concept demonstration. Recently, the Cosmos team was awarded another project called, uh, called Cosmic that will focus on connecting the Cosmos testbed to other international and domestic testbed, including, for example, the Peering and Fabric testbed in the US and Open Ireland testbed in Ireland. So in order to help uh, drive and validate the design and deployment of Cosmos, we've designed and conducted several pilot experiments. The first pilot experiment in the, is in the areas of uh, full duplex wireless, where radios can transmit and receive at the same time on the same frequency channel, which is a capability not supported by current radios that only operate in half duplex mode. In this experiment, we integrated our wideband full duplex, uh, full duplex radios, which we presented in Mobicom 2019, in the Cosmos test that with open source hardware design and software applications. People now around the world can log in remotely uh, and conduct research in the area of full duplex wireless. These experiments also demonstrate another key feature of the Cosmos testbed, which is to allow the integration of novel and customized experiment experimental hardware in an open access testbed, where the testbed's infrastructure, such as the radio nodes and edge cloud servers, can be leveraged for different types of uh, experiments. In another pilot experiment, we focused on the converge, converge optical wireless networking using Cosmos optical network. In this experiment, the wideband full duplex radio uh, mentioned in the previous slide was integrated with Cosmos dark fiber based optical network. In particular, the uh, RF self interference cancellation happens locally at the node in the RF domain, while the digital self interference cancellation algorithms and other digital signal processing tasks happen in a remote server that is about 14 miles away from the radio nodes, which we configure through this uh, reconfigurable optical network. Recall that the Cosmos also enables reconfigurable uh, reconfiguration of the underlying optical networks in order to generate uh, various network topologies considering different bandwidth and latency requirements. You can view this as an example of a remote signal processing where you put the remote uh, signal processing capabilities at let's say 10, 20 miles away from, from the actual uh, physical radio node. We also explored SDN-based dynamic optical switching of the front hole fiber links with high bandwidth and low latency. This is motivated by the rapid growing cloud radio access networks where baseband processing units or BBUs will be moved to a centralized location to allow sharing of possible, uh, possible heterogeneous computing resources among multiple uh, remote radio hats. We developed a scheme and optical control algorithms 
to efficiently control the optical front hole link for remote baseband processing and demonstrated the optical switching based wireless handover using the Cosmos testbed. This is the first experiment we did with Cosmos that actually integrates the wireless and optical resources, which are both orchestrated by the same SDN controller. And <clears throat> due to the significant higher uh, path loss and millimeter wave frequencies, uh, for our deployment, it's important to characterize the, the wireless channel and learn about its propagation models before we deploy our millimeter wave radio nodes. And towards this goal, uh, we have been collaborating with Nokia Bell Labs on the 28 gigahertz channel measurements in the Cosmos deployment area. We uniquely focus on specific deployment sites of millimeter wave radio nodes, such as in uh, city intersections, on building rooftops, um, on cross avenue bridges, um, and so on and so forth. So compared with other millimeter wave measurement campaigns, we focus on extensive measurements on very long sidewalks up to uh, one mile of distance in a very dense urban environment at very fine grain uh, step sizes. Our theoretical analysis based on real world measurement data showed that at 28 gigahertz in such a dense urban Kenyan environment, a minimum data rate of at least uh, with at least 15 dB signal to noise ratio can be supported for link distances of up to more than 200 meters. These measurement results are also guiding us on the outdoor deployment of the IBM 28 gigahertz phased array antenna modules. The deployment of uh, autonomous vehicles in complex dense urban environment also present unique challenges and smart city intersections will be at the core of an intelligent traffic management system for metropolitan areas. In another pilot experiments, uh, we use Cosmos, which provides um, all components needed for deploy developing smart intersection uh, applications and we use this as an example to see how can we do experiments along these lines. These smart city pilot experiments involves the cameras and edge cloud servers deployed in the Cosmos testbed. In particular, we developed customized deep learning algorithms to create a radar screen movie that tracks all objects in the intersection. Um, the algorithms are capable of detecting objects of notably different sizes observed from the bird's, uh, bird's eye view of the cameras. And as, as you can see from these video clips, uh, during the pandemics, uh, researchers have been also using these cameras combined with edge cloud servers for uh, social distancing tracking of people walking on the street. So as an, another example, uh, continuing from the previous slides, uh, this one use case of this uh, smart city intersection where people have been developing a video based social distancing analyzer. Essentially, you take video frames captured by these uh, cameras, you do calibration to map the 2D on image distances to the on ground distances in the 3D world. And you can basically do all kinds of object detection and tracking, and then you can assign IDs to each users. You can have a sense of how, you know, how they are following the social distancing uh, when they're walking the street. So we're currently collecting more video streams using this uh, infrastructure, and then we'll be able to compare the behaviors of this during the, uh, the pandemic or after the, the pandemic. So on the education and outreach side, we've also developed the Cosmos Education Toolkit, which is the small version of the Cosmos node. We work very closely with the, uh, several high school teachers who participate over the past uh, four summers on creating over 100 K-12 education labs uh, that span mass uh, science and computer science. These labs have been used in different high schools and numerous education and outreach activities. So to summarize, um, in this talk, we present the challenges we faced and experiences we gained uh, during the past four and a half years uh, for the design, deployment, and development of the Cosmos testbed. Cosmos features a number of unique capabilities, including programmable radios in both sub six gigahertz and millimeter wave frequencies, a dark fiber-based programmable optical transport network, as well as core and edge cloud. All these capabilities combined can enable a wide range of research and experiments at scale in the real dense urban environment, as, and also to further enable emerging applications such as augmented reality, uh, smart intersections and autonomous vehicles. <clears throat> We'd like to uh, acknowledge the National Science Foundation and the Platforms for Advanced Wireless Research Program. Uh, we also thank many people for their numerous contributions and uh, important uh, help and support throughout the development of testbed. And with that, I'd I like to conclude the talk and then uh, feel free to let me know if there's any questions. And today I only overview a very brief, uh, uh, it's a very brief overview of the things that we can do. And if you're interested about, you know, what if Cosmos will be able to support a specific type of ex experiments, or if some of the technologies you have in mind are actually included in Cosmos testbed, feel free to uh, let us know, and then we'll be very happy to talk more about how we can help you uh, to use the Cosmos testbed for for research. <laughs>